Hi, welcome to this uh, system. It's a, a new breed that we have made. We have created Arch Linux B Xmonad. Xmonad is a Windows styling manager and um, we're working on it and we're making tutorials about actually Arch Linux. So inside here we've installed VirtualBox and we have two virtual boxes. This one is a phase one, phase two, phase three. What am I talking about? I'm talking about ArcLinux.com. If you want to go to install, I want to go to phase five and install Arch Linux, the Arch way. So we're starting with a terminal screen. Then you uh, need to follow one of these uh, choices here. Either you have an older motherboard, you choose BIOS, you choose UFI. If you have a newer one, then you go to phase two and phase three. And if you're working on experimenting and learning on VirtualBox, then you use BIOS and then one, two, and then three. And now it's up to choosing a desktop. So there is no Xmonad, so we are developing it right now. And um, well, we would like to have a go at it on Arch Linux. So this is phase one, two, and three. And then I made a clone. So I can always go back and, and go back in time, so to speak, and let's continue working on this one. So this is our backup. If we want to try it again, we just remove everything and we start afresh. That's always good, no, good to know that you can um, try it again sometime later, right? So this is the one I'm going to boot up, start. Now we need to, oh yeah, let's power off again. So you know why, why that's happening. IDE secondary master, just press here so that the ISO is no longer available. It was the ISO of Arch Linux 2018, December. So when we restart it, it's really going to be the grub, not the ISO that's in there. So this is um, us booting up grub, Arch Linux, LightDM is installed, Xwork is installed. So phase one, two, three but no desktop is installed. So nothing is here, back here. So we can type in our password. Nothing will be launched since there is nothing behind it. There is no desktop environment. And that's what it says um, somewhere in the articles as well. If you go to phase two, harsh wiki and go to phase three, then you see, this, you see here the text that says, do not reboot until you have a desktop environment. So normally, we do something like XFCE and you install a few commands and you get this out of the box. And this is two lines, two words, XFCE, XFCE dash goodies. And that's it. And you have your complete XFCE desktop environment. It's not that simple with Xmonad. But basically that's what we need to do. We have to choose our desktop now and um, install it. Okay. Let's move this guy or that guy to another window. That's the first thing I'm gonna do. So it's full, um, you have the full, um, uh, well, window in a virtual box here. So I can't get inside, but there is an option. There is a possibility to get inside even now. What you need to know is that in virtual box, there's a keyboard shortcut. Take a look at your keyboard. It's the right control you need to press and keep pressing. Then you choose F2 or F3 or F4 or F5, F6, X7 is back graphical and back control F6 or F2 or something like that. So it means you have a TTY2. So basically you're saying whatever, I'm not going to work with a graphical uh, installation here, I'm gonna work on the terminal TTY. So, oops, that's some, somebody else. Eric with a dollar. So we're logging in. And then we need to install um, our system. So what do they say on Xmonad on ArchWiki? If you want to install this, you need to install Xmonad, Xmonad Contrib, and Xmonad Utils can be in there as well, and maybe XMO bars. So I don't know, if there is a mention here somewhere. Yes, there is. Making room for docs. We're going to use the polybar, but we're going to install it anyway. 
for later use maybe. Okay, so we need to install elements and we follow the guide and you see here what elements we need to install, but quickly we'll get stuck and we need to be inventive. So that's what we're gonna be. Let's be creative. So pseudo pacman minus s. What is available? I just press twice on tap. So xmonad is there, contrib is there, utils is there, and we need another one xmo bar. Okay. Let's install those already. That's a lot of Haskell stuff, as you see. And maybe we should take a look again while this is working. It says here somewhere up here, a tiling window manager for X, it's written in Haskell. Xmonad is written and configured and extensible in Haskell. Custom layout, algorithms, key bindings, etc., are written by the user in configuration files. Xenorama is fully supported, allowing windows to be tiled on several physical screens. Okay, so then we are going to read more and we see that actually we're working with a program, an application, because we are compiling it. Xmonad dash dash recompile is something that's interesting to remember. Xmonad will be started not with Xinit, but with our display manager called LightDM. Okay, then we need to create a .xmonad directory and get something inside here. But there is no xmonad.hs file. When we install i3 on Arch Linux, then we get a basic empty i3. In this case, we don't get anything. There is no uh, particular configuration available. So you need to do it all from scratch. We have an xmonad wiki, we have an xmonad configuration archive, some facts, and a forum thread. Best approach is to only place your changes and customizations in here, and write as such that unset parameters are picked up from the built-in default config. This is achieved by doing this. Okay. This simply overrides the default terminal and border width while leaving all other settings at their default. As things get more complicated, and things will get more complicated, you can, well, start making sections and so on, like this here, default config, terminal is my terminal, mod mask and all that. So it's very, how should I put it? There's nothing you just can copy paste. It's um, something to figure out, to make, to find, to work upon, and of course to copy paste, but you need to know and to find where, but it's not here. You can't find anything here, not on ArchWiki. So scroll back up, where can you find it? You can find here some configuration archives. There is the wiki here. So there is possibility to learn from, from others and uh, take a look at some examples here. Template from Xmonad HS 0.9, some pictures how it might look of different people sharing their configs. Now, we have been working on xmonad for a while and we have our own xmonad.hs. So rather than copy pasting something from somebody and trying to figure out what it all is, we better import our own hs and all the Keyboard shortcuts will be in there, like, like Ctrl T and Super Return and all that stuff will be available. Polybar is there, Polybar Config is there. So at this point in time, I need to go quite uh, quickly to get all the Arco Linux spices in. Maybe you've seen some pictures, so I mean videos I mean by that, and also images on Arch, about Arch Linux when we do a clean install of Arch Linux, we always try to, at the end, say, okay, how to quickly get to a Arco Linux look, that's by importing stuff from Arco Linux. So that's basically what we're going to do now as well. So it's a lot of reading to do this. It's um, also gets, it's quite, well, not that easy, this Haskell thing, 
So it's going to take a while to get it all in our heads. Anyway, we are on uh, Arch Linux, uh, sorry, Arch Linux, meaning we can't git anything. There is no git installed. So that's the first thing I need to do. sudo pacman minus s git. Installing git. OK. Where are our scripts? They are on github.com slash arco linux d arco xmonad. That's down. If it is, is, is uh, in our system, it's downloaded. Unless we go to arco xmonad and we see lots of scripts. First off, let's make sure that that's working with enough cores. So four cores are being used on my virtual box. That's okay. Four for the guest, four for the host. Now the display manager, I think we took care of that, but nevertheless, let's take a look. So we installed LightDM. We did not install Arco Linux LightDM GTK greeter, but the normal LightDM GTK greeter. Okay, so if we would run this, we would have get conflicts. The Arch Linux wallpapers is not installed. We don't need it at this point in time. And xmonad, xmonad contrib is installed. xmonad utils is installed and xmo bar is installed. So that's okay. Nothing to be said about 100. 100 is already installed. The sounds, we're not worried about the sound. Not right now. Bluetooth, whatever, printer, Samba, network, whatever. The things we need first on um, I guess Arch Linux is to be able to get our Arco Linux stuff in. That's maybe the first thing I'll do. I could run number 400 already. 400 is software coming from Arch Linux repo and it's distro specific. It's specific for this distro, for this desktop, Xmona. So that's something I could run in the meantime as well. So that is done. I I'm going to let this thing do its job and I'm going to go to Control F3. So another TTY, I'm login there as well. So while the other one is working, I'm going to go to a second terminal. Okay. What we can do as well, unless, is go back inside Arco Xmonad, ask for the list. And this time I'm going to go in a folder called Archway. In here we have three scripts scripts to make sure that anybody going to phase 5 Arch Linux can import stuff from Arco Linux back again. Because mainly Arco Linux is all about making it beautiful, making it uh, tweaking it and making configurations and some special theming and all that. But basically it's still Arch Linux. So we want to have all the stuff imported. Now I'm going to make a mistake because I want you to see that for me it's an issue. I can't run number 20 unless I do number 10. But that's not the case for everybody. That's a really specific thing here in Belgium with our ISP, Internet Service Provider. And if I do number 20 again after running this number 10, then we're just waiting for all the keys to come in. And that's um, something that depends when you run it it goes very fast and sometimes it takes a long while but basically you have to sit back and wait till everything is done and all the keys are in well that's doing its work let's go to control f2 again and you see that the last script here number 400 we ran it and it's working but if i would try to run 500 nothing is working and that's because it uses an AUR helper. 500 says software AUR, Arch user repository, for Xmonad, and there are specific things in there that um, we need, and some of them I think we can not install as well. Some of them can go, but let's see, uh, it's still experimenting, right? So we can't install it because we don't have an AUR helper. Okay. Let's go back, see what happens here. Still working on his signatures. Let him do his work. It's taking some time. 
fine. Alas, what we can do in the meantime is also go back to archway. Now, I have to wait. There will be other problems otherwise. I have to wait. Till the sig signatures are in. Can't take much longer. Sometimes you have the idea, it died. It died, right? No, it did not die. Just have patience, wait for it. You will be rewarded. Guess we better put it on pause for now. Okay, it's uh, done. He's ready. Keys are trusted. So it takes a while. Sometimes it takes, it's super fast, and the other day it's slow. That's how it is. So if that's done, all the keys are in, and the key is trusted, then we're going to add the repos from Arch Linux to the system, to pacman, etc, pacman.conf, that's a little script that runs here, that's going to change um, our pacman.conf, and you see already a few lines extra. When you do an update, you see Arch Linux repo, Arch Linux repo third party, Dropbox, Spotify, Discord, and Arch Linux repo submicron, all the wallpapers from our birthday. So these elements are ready to be installed, it means sudo pacman s Arco Linux, you'll get a long list of packages you can install on Arch Linux. Okay, so that's going to make our life a little bit easier. Now, when you go back and you install 500, you see still all these errors. By the way, I've made already a change and I've left out GTK2 Perl and Perl Linux desktop files. I don't think we need them. So they are not going to be installed anymore. If I rerun it, those are not in, you see? So, but still a problem. Why is that? Because it wants to run an application called Yay or Tryzen and it's not installed. So bottom line, we can't install it. So let me do something I've never done before in any of the videos. That is add another repo to our Pacman. Nano etc. Pacman.com. Oops, I'm not the chief. I'm not the chief. I need to be boss. Pseudo nano. And all the way down, I'm going to write more or less what's up there. But I know there is another repo, and we use the repo when we make an, an we make an ISO. Oh my god. And it's called repo underscore ISO. So that's the name of the repo. Okay, and for the rest you start typing over exactly what you see up there. Exactly the same, no typos allowed. And all the capital letters, you do exactly the same. Oops typing exactly the same, but I need to go up. All right, I made so much typos, I'm gonna check. Arco Linux underscore repo ISO, correct. SIG level, correct. Space required, database optional, include. Okay, done. Control X, you save it with the letter yes and enter and it's done. Everything is now changed. We have a new repo and we can read what it says. Update won't work. And we're not on Arch Linux, we are on Arch Linux. The alias does not exist yet. So this is what the alias update does. And I have something new now. I have a line at the bottom that says repo ISO. So now, 
I can say to the system, install me A, install me Trizen. Both are AOR helpers. So if I do this and try to run number 500, then he finds an application called Yay and it says, okay, I can install and everything goes smoothly again. So that was uh, 400 and 500. 400 was from the Arch repo, so pseudo Pacman worked just fine. 500 came from the AOR, Arch user repository. Arch Linux does not support it. They are, we need to have a AOR helper to install the packages from the AOR, Yay or Trizen or others. In the past we had Packer, Yahoo, maybe names that, that ring a bell. Then, Arch Linux repo is also important. So this, this number 600 is a long list of stuff we're going to install. Well, I see here Discord, Dropbox, Instinct, Spotify. That's not necessary, I know. But it's going to be installed anyway, and I see something we need to um, delete. So I'm gonna make, at the same time, make it better here, this um, Arch Linux D GitHub pulse recording. All right, so I changed something on the other computer and I'm gonna get pull everything. So the changes are reflected in this line 600. And I'm going to run this number 600 here. So this is the Arch, the Arch Linux stuff that we're going to install, like the themes, so it's everything is nice. The bin is there, Xmonad is there, of course, the configuration of Xmonad. And here is where it gets a little bit tricky. We started with LightDM and the standard LightDM is not that nice. So we've made an Arco Linux LightDM. They're actually the same files. So the package LightDM GTK Greeter thinks, hey, um, you can't touch it because the, these files are from me. So what I need to do is to say, forget about it. Let's get Arc Linux stuff in, LightDM. GTK greeter is out and the light GTK greeter light DM GTK greeter settings is out. So I'm deleting these two again and rerunning number 600. So there's no conflict anymore because we've made our own packages with a nice wallpaper and all that rather than this blank GTK greeter that comes from Arch. So that's what we do, right? It's design-wise, uh, making things nicer, new slim lock teams, uh, stuff like that, to make it, well, nice in design and in feel. And let's now see what we installed. So these things are not necessary at this point in time in the video, So, but that's how Arc Linux D is built up. Um, we are installing Spotify and Discord and all that. So if you don't want that, Put the hashtag in front of it and it will not be installed. Delete the line and it will not be installed. Simple as that. That's what we encourage you to do, to reuse the files. So another thing that I need to fix here, remove, cannot remove the dot .config auto start. So we don't need that line there. So I'm gonna push that again to uh, the GitHub. So, and that's how we develop. Git pull, new things number 600 has changed and if you run it now you won't see this error pop up at the end because it wants to delete something that's already gone there we are constantly updating these packages and it's already deleted okay so ls we installed 400 500 600 now 200 and 300 should be normal packages, normal software packages. Never too sure about that. The only thing to know for sure is to reboot. You can also run 800 and 700. 700 is for fonts. That's never gonna hurt anybody installing fonts. It's actually needed if you want a beautiful font in the termites um, terminal. So we've taken care of that as well. And if you want to auto log in, then it's also interesting to do. You know, what we can do is edit etc lightdm slash lightdm.conf, but we have a little script that does it for us. So we can just auto log in 
next time. What's your lucky? Mine is Eric. Aha, we are in Arch Linux, meaning it says group auto login does not exist in ETC group. We've created that. So that's going to be a separate tutorial <laughs> to make uh, sure that uh, that's working as well. Anyway, um, let's try, try a pseudo reboot, right? See what we get. This is LightDM. It's the look from uh, Arco Linux, as you see. And then we are going to boot up. There are things missing, but it's normal when you're on Arch Linux. It's um, to, sorry, to be expected. And everything is now here working. You see, don't think you see a double. So this is the virtual machine and this is my own Xmonad up here. And um, let's see if this works as well. Control Alt, Control Alt, Control Alt, Control Shift, um, Return is this one, and you want to kill this again. Control Shift Q, I am working with Azerty. <laughs> nope, I'm not working with Azerty. So I need to fix that as well. There are some things flashing up here. That's because there is a code behind it and it's not installed. So if you, well, if you install everything, 100, 200, 300, um, that's it, I guess. Uh, 200, 300 is still to be done. Then probably this will be gone using an application behind it. This is Polybar, by the way. And I am um, guess I'm going to cut the video here. And the rest is going to be about uh, more tweaking and more design changes and all that. I am gonna not gonna record what I'm gonna do now is install the sound, the Bluetooth, the printers, the Samba. No, I'm not gonna do that. Not the Samba, not 150. But these guys, that one and that one is going to be installed without recording uh, the video. Okay.